Do you often find yourself saying yes when you want to say no? Are you constantly putting others' needs before your own? If these questions resonate with you, it's likely that you're a people pleaser. This trait, while admirable in its intentions, can often lead to an imbalance in your personal and professional relationships. We're here today to discuss a vital topic that's often overlooked, setting boundaries. This doesn't mean building walls around yourself, but rather defining what is acceptable and what isn't for your peace of mind and emotional health. It's about learning to prioritize your needs alongside those of others. Being a people pleaser often means having a hard time saying no, fearing conflict, and constantly seeking approval. But this can take a toll on your mental and emotional well-being, leaving you feeling drained and unappreciated. If you're nodding your head, then you're in the right place. Stick around as we delve into the process of setting boundaries as a people pleaser. So, what exactly are boundaries? Boundaries. They're not just physical lines or borders that separate countries or states. In the context of personal development, boundaries are the invisible lines that define your emotional and mental space. They're the rules, limits, and guidelines that you set for yourself to identify safe, acceptable, and comfortable ways for others to behave around you, and how you'll respond when someone crosses those lines. Now, why are boundaries necessary? Imagine living in a house with no walls, no doors, no fences. Sounds chaotic, right? That's exactly what it's like to live without personal boundaries. They provide a sense of security and control over your personal space, both physically and emotionally. They help protect your self-esteem and maintain your self-respect. They enable you to separate your own needs, thoughts, feelings, and desires from those of others. Boundaries differ between individuals because we all have unique needs, values, and perceptions. What feels comfortable and acceptable to one person may feel intrusive or disrespectful to another. For instance, some people may be comfortable with spontaneous visits from friends, while others need advance notice. These differences are why it's essential to communicate your boundaries clearly to others. Not having clear boundaries, especially for people-pleasers, can lead to feelings of resentment, stress, and burnout. People-pleasers often struggle with setting boundaries because they fear rejection or confrontation. They tend to put the needs of others before their own, often at the cost of their own well-being. However, it's essential to remember that setting boundaries is not about being selfish or rude. It's about self-care and ensuring your emotional and mental well-being. In the end, your boundaries define who you are. They reflect your values, your self-respect, and how you want to be treated by others. They're an integral part of your identity and self-esteem. They're crucial in maintaining healthy relationships and ensuring that you're not taken advantage of. Remember, your boundaries matter, and it's crucial to respect and uphold them. Now that we know what boundaries are, how do we recognize when we need to set them? This is a question many people grapple with, especially those who naturally lean towards pleasing others. Let's start by understanding that boundaries are not about building walls or shutting people out. On the contrary, they help create a healthy balance in relationships, leading to mutual respect and understanding. One of the most common signs that indicate the need for boundaries is feeling overwhelmed. You may notice that you're constantly tired, stressed, or anxious. This could be because you're taking on too much, trying to meet everyone's needs but your own. It's like carrying a heavy backpack up a hill. The more you put in, the harder it gets. Another telltale sign is resentment. If you find yourself feeling bitter or irritated because you're always the one making sacrifices or compromises, it's time to reassess. It's okay to say no sometimes. Remember you're not a doormat, feeling taken advantage of is another red flag. Do you often find yourself in situations where you're giving more than you're receiving or where your kindness is being exploited? That's a clear sign that some boundaries need to be set. Now let's talk about self-awareness. It's crucial because it's the lens through which you view your interactions and experiences. It helps you understand your feelings, recognize your needs, and identify what drains you. It's like a compass, guiding you to where you need to set your boundaries. Here's the thing. Setting boundaries doesn't make you selfish or unkind. It's about self-preservation and respect for yourself and others. It's about knowing your worth and not allowing anyone to diminish it. It's about finding a balance, a middle ground where you can be kind and generous without losing yourself in the process. In the end, it's about understanding that it's okay to put yourself first sometimes, to give yourself the same courtesy and respect you extend to others. Recognizing when you need to set boundaries is the first step towards asserting them. Okay, we know we need boundaries, but how do we set them? It's a valid question and one that's not always easy to answer. 
but here we'll break it down into manageable steps. The first step is to identify your boundaries. This starts with self-reflection. Ask yourself, what makes you uncomfortable? When do you feel taken advantage of? Recognizing these moments helps to identify where you need to set boundaries. Remember, these can be physical, emotional, or even time boundaries. It's your life, and you get to decide. Once you've identified your boundaries, it's time to articulate them. This is where assertive communication comes into play. Assertive communication is clear, direct, and respectful. It's not about being aggressive or confrontational, it's about expressing your needs and expectations in a way that others can understand. You might say, I need some time to myself in the evenings, or I don't appreciate it when you make decisions for me. The key is to be clear and firm, but also respectful. Next, it's time to communicate your boundaries to others. This can be a bit daunting, especially if you're used to pleasing others. But remember, your needs and feelings are just as important as anyone else's. When communicating your boundaries, be direct and straightforward. Avoid using vague or passive language. Instead, use I statements to express your feelings and needs. For example, I feel overwhelmed when I have too many commitments. I need to limit the number of projects I take on. Now here's a crucial part. Practice. Setting boundaries is a skill, and like any skill, it takes practice to get better. Start small, with a boundary that's relatively easy for you to enforce. Practice asserting this boundary until it becomes second nature. Then, move on to more challenging boundaries. But what if someone doesn't respect your boundaries? This is where consequences come in. Decide on a suitable consequence for when someone crosses a boundary and communicate this clearly. It might be something like, if you continue to disregard my need for personal time, I will have to limit our interactions. Remember, it's not about punishing the other person, but about protecting your own well-being. Lastly, be patient. Change doesn't happen overnight. It might take some time for others to adjust to your new boundaries. And that's okay. It's important to stay consistent and to reinforce your boundaries as needed. Remember, setting boundaries is a process. It takes time, but it's well worth the effort. Because when we set boundaries, we're not just protecting ourselves. We're also teaching others how to treat us. And that's a lesson well worth teaching. Setting boundaries sounds easy on paper, but it can get tricky in real life, right? Let's dive into some of the challenges you may encounter while setting boundaries. One of the most common ones is fear. Fear of rejection, fear of confrontation, fear of coming across as selfish. It's normal to feel this way, especially if you're a people pleaser by nature. But remember, Boundaries are not about shutting people out, they're about self-respect, they're about creating a healthy space for yourself. So, if you're afraid of rejection, remind yourself that setting boundaries is an act of self-love, and anyone who respects you will respect your boundaries too. Confrontation can be scary, we get it. But it's not a battle, it's a conversation. You're simply communicating your needs. Practice makes perfect here. Start small, practice saying no to little things, and gradually, you'll find it easier to express your boundaries confidently. And if you're worried about appearing selfish, remember that it's okay to put yourself first sometimes. It's not selfish to care about your own well-being. In fact, by setting boundaries, you're teaching others how to treat you. Overcoming these challenges may not happen overnight, but with patience and persistence, you will make progress. And here's a golden rule to remember. Boundaries should always be set with clarity, respect, and consistency. When it comes to setting boundaries, it's essential to be firm yet compassionate with yourself and others. So, in conclusion, we've journeyed through the importance of understanding boundaries, recognizing our need for them, and the steps to effectively set them. We've also addressed the challenges we might face along the way. This journey is especially crucial for people-pleasers, as setting boundaries is not about being selfish, but about prioritizing our well-being. Remember, it's not selfish to set boundaries. It's self-care. So here's to saying no when we need to and creating a healthier, happier life for ourselves.